Women in the Bible, the Shulamite woman and the Shunammite woman, Shulamite is a feminine name of Hebrew origin, Shulamith, meaning gentle or peaceful, who were the Shulamite and Shunammite, we find the Shulamite in the Song of Songs and the Shunammite in 2 Kings 4, Shulamite. The woman of Jerusalem is the central figure in the Song of Solomon also called the Song of Songs, a poem in verse written to praise the virtues of love between a husband and wife. The poem takes the form of a dialogue between a husband, king, and his wife, Shulamite. The woman of Shunem, or the Shunammite woman, is a character in the Bible. In 2 Kings 4 verse 8 she is described as a great woman in the city of Shunem, the woman from Shumen, although nameless and rarely spoken directly by Elisha, is portrayed as the head of the family and the fearless initiator in her relationship with the prophet Elisha. She often asserts her decision-making power, refusing Elisha's help at the beginning of their relationship, resisting his announcement that she will give birth to a son, and negotiating to return her land to the king. One day Elisha was passing through Shunem. What did the Shunammite do? She insisted that he has to accept the invitation to dine at her house. Moreover, whenever he passed, he would go to her to eat. 2 Kings 4 verses 8 to 10. The Shunammite was a rich woman who cared for the needs of others and especially for the needs of the man of God. Sometime after Elisha's pattern of offering meals was established, she asked her husband if they could do more. Let's make a small room up with walls, says the woman to her husband, and so that when he comes here, he will have a bed, a table, a chair, a candlestick in this room, so that he can sit there when he comes to us. Elisha had just returned to Shunem and went to visit her, and she invited him into the upper room, which was built for him. One day, while Elisha and his servant Gehazi were sitting in the guest room, the prophet wondered what could be have be done to reward their kindness. Gehazi said, she has no son, and her husband is old. Call her, he told Elisha, the woman came and stood in the doorway. This time, next year, you will hold a son in your arms, he told Elisha. Please, man of God, do not mislead me, she said, however, the woman became pregnant, and the next year she gave birth to a son, as he had told Elisha, the Shunammite woman used her goodness and wealth to serve, 2 Kings 4 verses 8 to 10 she was blessed with a child because of her goodwill. This was in accordance with God's promise, Matthew 10 verse 41. The child grew up and one day went out to his father, who was with the reapers, he suddenly shouted at his father, my head, my head. His father told a servant to take him to his mother, the boy sat in his mother's lap until noon, then died, he laid him on the bed of the man of God, in the guest room, and closed the door. The Shalamite woman who lived quietly in the midst of her people before this son was born to her remains calm even in this situation. She called her husband and said, please send me a servant and a donkey, I want to go to the man of God in a hurry, and then I will return. The Shunammite in that situation knew how to speak nicely to her husband, to the man of God, to all those around her. She was calm, did not scream, did not shout, and did not say anything to her husband about their dead son, the man of God. And he said, why do you want to go to him today? It is just not the new moon or the Sabbath. This woman is a quiet woman, a woman who knows where to run even when death comes, and says to her husband, be at peace. The woman did not call for help, but went to Mount Carmel to talk to Elisha and Gehazi. When she found Elisha, she grabbed him by the legs. Gehazi came to drive her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is in bitter misery but the Lord has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord, she said. Didn't I not tell you don't give me hope? The Bible says that if we have faith like a mustard seed, we can tell the mountains to move and they will. The prophet Elisha brought the son of the Shunammite back to life because of her faith. After praying and lying down on the boy, the child sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha called the child's mother. When she came in, he said, take your son. She fell at Elisha's feet and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. What can we learn from the Shunammite? The life of the Shunammite woman teaches us important lessons about the essential qualities that we must have, contented, 1 Timothy 6 verses 1 to 10, a good, compassionate heart, Romans 5 verse 5, persistent, Luke 18 verses 1 to 6, the first quality of the Shunammite, contented, 
she was happy with everything she had, 1 Timothy 6 verses 1 to 10. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18. When Alicia asked the woman what he could do for her, she simply said that she was happy with what she had. 2 Kings 4 verses 11 to 13. This is the secret of a happy and grateful heart. The contentment and gratitude of the Shunammite woman's heart opened the door to many blessings in her life. The second quality of the Shunammite woman, a kind and compassionate heart, Romans 5 verse 5, Alicia's work was aided by the goodness of the Shunammite. It was through the outpouring of her love for God's prophet that the Shunammite received a blessing that she did not even ask for. The women served and helped in the ministry, as well as other women who helped Jesus in his ministry, Romans 8 verses 2 to 3, third quality, perseverance, Luke 18 verses 1 to 6, the devil and his cohorts will always try to steal from God's blessings. Never be satisfied with anything less than God has given you. The determination of the Shunammite woman to bring her child back to life, 2 Kings 4 verses 8 to 37, she had a perseverance that was not weakened in time of pain, a woman of God must be persistent. There will come a time in all of our lives when Satan will try to steal something that God has decided to bless. This is the time to lean on God's word against the devil, Ephesians 6 verse 13. Morale, keeping your heart upright, full of love and empty of bitterness is the secret of receiving from God. 1. Be hospitable, be hospitable among yourselves, without grumbling. 1 Peter 4 verse 9, agree with your family, spouse, or roommate, and dare to receive guests, too. Be ready to be even more hospitable, 2 Kings 4 verse 10 do more, give more. 3. Be content with what you have and do not expect any reward, for dot remember that God is our source.